Hi there, my name is Kendrick, and today I get to interview Stanislav. So Stanislav, welcome, man. Hi. Can you tell us your full type, please? So my type is INTP, uh, TISI, double feminine, uh, sleep blast, play, consume last. All right. And social type flex. Social type one, you said? Social type flex, which is number one. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Um, that's your energy dominant, Derek, <laughs> being goofy. <laughs> um, so what did you think and how did you feel when you got your typing results back? Uh, well, I received my typing results in three parts. Um, like I first I tried with the cognition and resolution team. Um, and also before that, I sent my video typing to Facebook group, which typed me as TISI, like most of the people typing me as, I, I was sure that I am INTJ, okay, for like last three years, I was sure that I am INTJ. Um, because th this vibe of sleep plus play consume probably is is very ij -ish. So I was sure that I am INTJ. So when I received my results from all the people from the community and they say that I am uh, sensory and I am thinking TI at the top, then uh, I, I couldn't accept that. I, I rejected it. I, I, felt, I felt like, okay, I tricked you. So <laughs> I, I am so modified that you cannot even realize my, my type. But then I sent the video to the cognition resolution team and they, and they also typed me as TISI, uh, INTP uh, jumper, right? And uh, they, they typed me as masculine feminine, which I know, which I knew is, is, is wrong because I was, so sure about my feminine sensory. I'm like feminine sensory to the extreme. <laughs> and, but they, they said that I am sleep that play consume, which I, I expected to be play last because I, I just don't want to play with people. And, and I was sure that I am introverted. So I'm being typed as extrovert and consume last. No, no, I, it was not me. I was sure that they are wrong. Um, so uh, I, I just, I just needed this proof from the highest authority in this community, right? So <laughs> when Dave, uh, sent me this, um, this audio, he, he sent me two audios and he explained me what is going on. And he also said that, yes, TISI, sleep by stay consume. And then he gave me all the reasons why is that, why I see myself I, as INTJ. And and then I, and I, I finally started to see myself as INTP. So it was not easy because I was super biased. I knew that I am INTJ. Like you, you couldn't prove me that I am not a, a INTJ. I, I resonated so much with all the memes, with all the descriptions of INTJ. Uh, I, I didn't want to consume. So IJ Box was like, yeah, it, it's me. I am IJ Box. Uh, but then... Uh, but then, yeah, when I received the result and I, I started looking at myself from the decider perspective, from TI head perspective, it was like, oh, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And so now I feel, I feel like this is my type. Yeah. I accepted it finally. It, it's funny that with masculine TI, it took like three separate groups to convince you otherwise about your type. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was I was sure that no one can type to me because I worked on myself for so long, and I I was in this personality development. Um, I was working on myself for the last decade, so I knew that something must be, and that that I I, I am for sure hard to type. Right, I'm hard to type because I changed so much uh, over the last uh, few years. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't accept it. Also, I, I believe that, uh, I mean, I believe that I'm easily convinced um, because if someone gives me good reason, then I'm changing my life completely. I, I can change my, change my opinion. But at first you have to convince me and no one could um, because no one, has, no one has the authority, actually. I seek authority <laughs> to change my opinion. Like, yeah, you have to have my authority. Um, it makes sense in traditional Myers Briggs that you would be INTJ because you know TISI that's an OI type, right? So that's like an IJ type, and then so it, it, in the old system, there's no there's no way that would 
you could be an INTP because it wouldn't fit. Um, yeah. But, but it, it makes sense in OPS because uh, you, you're because of the decider fact, the factor. That's like the biggest factor, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then I think it's cool that like you saw your feminine sensory right away because I think everyone's aware of their sexual modalities. That one, that one's like like most people can self-type their sexual modalities, I think. Um, and then I think the reason why you thought your play last is because you're number one. So, you know, friends last, right? So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now it also makes sense. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Yeah, so there's always that factor, uh, because like there's play last people that are like number fours, so they're play last, but they love people, so it's like it's like a weird, yeah. it's a weird combination, right? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, let's go over your parts. Um, let's start with your first animal. You've already been using it, actually. It's your SD sleep, um, and uh, the weird thing about st sleep is your energy dominant but your lead st so you're obsessed with facts right um and your identity is 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 with st but then you're not but your energy dominant so you're not obsessed with accuracy of information so what's what's going on there with that contradiction for you yeah that's also why i thought that i'm INTJ because i i don't like sensory i'm not like obsessed with with facts with sensory with numbers uh I feel much more intuitive than than than, than sensory, uh, so I just yeah the, the part that I couldn't accept is actually the SI because I was like okay I am sleep first so I am probably I mean I I thought that I am NTJ sleep first so I am TI FI which is like okay I can accept that but I feel more thinker than than feeler right so I might be actually TI and I because I I feel super intuitive like numbers. And and all the sensory uh, facts are not that important to me. You, you can convince me if you have a good big picture idea. Uh, looking at other people who are ST, uh, they annoy me because they are like uh, looking problem where there is no problem. Like they cannot uh, assume that the facts exist and build on top of this uh, like abstraction layer. They just need to be grounded. And I, I felt like. Um, I'm much more, uh, much more intuitive, and I like creating new ideas, which are like completely crazy. And I would probably fight with you on the on the intuitive ground. Uh, I was also into like NLP, which is neuro linguistic pro programming, and you know, all this, uh, all this NF woo woo, uh, feng shui, and lucid dreams, and Whatever you can imagine, I was uh, into it. So I thought, like, I have to be into it. Like, if I'm not into it, then who is? <laughs> but then probably um, it's because it's feminine as I, and, and I'm fighting on masculine. Uh, any, that's what Dave explained me, uh, how it works and, how, and, and why I cannot see it. Uh, but everything I, I, I'm doing is, is proving accessory. I'm... I'm like uh, showing showing my uh, my my results when I want to show show you that I have results in some area. I will show you um, my apps or my my website where where everything is organized, or I will show you my uh, my cars, or I will I will tell you that uh, like I will I will convince you on the facts, but I would like to. Um, fight you on, on on the on the abstraction. I don't know. It is really hard to explain. Like I am, I'm, I'm annoyed by by sensories, but also I'm using them a lot to make my point. It, it's it just sounds like you're double observing, you know, like yeah, yeah. And I'm triggered by sensories a lot. Uh, that's why also I thought that I, I am INTJ. Like paperwork is is what. What I'm stuck on, if I want to move on to to some different city, like the paperwork is what what holds me in in my city the most. Yeah. Well, feminine sensory sucks. So what can you do, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not sure if that's that that's the reason. Uh, I mean, what do you mean by the feminine sensory sucks? It's like I, I feel like. Masculine sensory is much much harder to to manage. I, I mean, like for you, you get triggered by it because um you you suck at you suck at SI because it's feminine because because it's yeah. feminine so it's it's gonna be tough for you right so 
Um, if you had masculine SI, it would. I mean, I have SI in the very bottom because I I'm an ENFP. Yeah. It's masculine SI, so like I I don't have the same problems as most ENFPs have. I still get triggered by it because it's my triggering function. You know, your fourth function is your triggering one, but I I can do it. Like I don't have like I've like all the paperwork stuff. I I can I don't have any problem with it. Like it's not my biggest problem, but I still get triggered by it because it's the fourth. Your fourth function is essentially the most triggering one. Um, like for you, for example, yeah. you have FE double activated, right? So then that's going to be super triggering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but also the, the SI is like, I, I really struggle with remembering facts, numbers, names, even, even names of people. Like it's really sometimes getting weird when I am talking with someone for the like fifth time and I, I don't remember his name. <laughs> it's like, fuck, what do I do now? Well, uh, that's problematic. It's it's not it's it's it, that's a combination of you having feminine SI and also being friends last because you don't you mm, you, you don't be, care. yeah you don't care so that's that's, that's <laughs> yeah yeah like unless they're like a big authority you just don't care enough to to remember their names so um, yeah, yeah that might be that might be it's, yeah it's not that I'm not. It's not that I um, I don't care about friends or that I'm unfriendly because I I think like I'm friendly, but because I just care so much about my stuff that I'm building, like I, I'm producing, I'm doing my my uh, my studies, my my work. It's so important that when I put friends and my stuff, then my stuff is much much heavier. Is is much more important. So that I just I I just don't feel obligated to take care so much about my friends um, but if I would not have that much um, priority on my staff then I would definitely spend more time with my friends it's not that I don't like my friends or I they just annoy me it's just I don't have time if I if I had more time I would definitely spend more on my on my friends this is why you're not uh, lead intuition because because of because of the tunnel vision uh, I'll explain so um okay. let me ask you a question what's the purpose of your work um my p- purpose of my work right now is to discover truth or uh d- d- discover truth which helps people that's that's how i would uh d- describe it so i want to create products which can help uh, the larger number of people as possible so uh that's also why I don't want to spend so much time with friends because I feel like if I create this stuff, um, then it might help much more um, wider, like, like much more people will be influenced by my health. Um, I, I was in a, in a phase, in my, there was a phase in my life in my early 20s when I was working mainly for money. And I, I felt like, okay, if I'm not happy with myself without money, then I first, I have to earn money. So I did it. Then I had like burnout. And and then I, two years or three years later, I decided to uh, focus on science. And I feel like science can all, can can be really helpful to other people because uh, it's the most reliable uh, way of uh, seeing uh, nature, reality. So what what happens after you build that product that helps a lot of people? What what's next? I will work on other products which can help people. I don't know. I feel like I feel like uh, Elon Musk, for example. I feel like he is very helpful. He he is very helpful. He he has a meaning in life, and I am not sure if I would like to to spend so much time. Uh, so much of my life working as hard as he is, but I feel like the way I, the way he is helping other people or spending his time is is the way I would like to spend my time also. Um, so Elon Musk is the number two according to David Chan. So, uh, so he yeah. still see, so he still hangs out with friends and stuff. Like you see him in podcasts, like Joe Rogan, for example. But uh, anyway, so after you've helped, after you made your second product, you you help millions of people. What's next? Um, another product which helps <laughs> even more people. I don't know. Uh, wait a second. Um, 
So I feel like I would I would like to um, create an art, like write some poetry, maybe write some novel, or I just create something. Yeah, I feel like I feel a strong need to create something which can influence people. Okay, so you've created your art. You're 75 years old. What's next? Oh, uh, what's next? Um, I would like to raise my children to to be a good good people. So so because I I, I believe that children are like the ultimate validation of your worldview. If you can raise your children to good people, then uh, that in it means that you are also a good person. So that's another thing. But if you ask me what next, then I would probably say, um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so if you're working on your project, would you say you would still make time to spend with your children in between projects? Or while you're working on a project? Um, I think that this is something that everyone should figure out how to do it, how to balance all, all, all of that. Uh, I feel like this is something you have to um, you have to take care of. Like, I have my calendar, I, I have a list. I mean, I take care of my time. I, I, I focus how I spend my time. So I take care uh, or I put attention, uh, I uh, place attention, yeah, put attention on how I spend my time. So if I cannot see any time spent with my friends during the week, then I know that in the next week I have to spend more time with my friends. So um, yeah, I, I know how it can end. If, if you are if you are working too much on your products, then you sacrifice other areas. But that's something I already went through. And that's something I know that now I have to take care of that, of your health, wealth, friends, and all of that. Right. Yeah, no, I was only asking because um, a lot of people who, like, focus on their self-projects their whole life, they're yeah. like, they, they become, let's say they become 65, and then suddenly, hey, guys, I'm done. I'm rich. Let's hang out. Yeah. And there's like What's a nice? tumbleweed rolling because there's nobody there waiting for you at the finish line. So, because because yeah. it's like friends is like um it's like a it's like a it's like investing money in a bank account right so you have to like put a little bit of and then the, the only way you can yeah. grow it is time time with friends and if you don't have time with friends then you won't have any at the end of the, at the end of the finish line so that's why I was out I, I yeah. was that yeah so I I think that the way I I mean I think that I went through that from I I was there I I lost all my friends like two times in my life. So I feel, I, I know that pain. Um, and I also reflected how to change it, how, how to prevent that from happening. So as I said, I know that I just have to force myself to just relax and spend more time with my friends. But that, that's something I had to figure out. I have to discover. That's true. Um, let's cover your second animal. Uh, you have double activated, double feminine SF blast. Um, what's going on there with you? That's that's an interesting one because you're you're an INTP, but you're double activated SF. That's 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 really strange. So what's what's going on there for you? Uh, okay. Um, I was thinking about it. Uh, I had a call with Nathan, which is almost my type twin. He is masculine and feminine, and I asked him what is SF blast. I, I don't really understand that. Can you explain to me? And we were discussing it, and the way I understand as a blast for me is that I like to be, I like to be a cool guy. I like to spend time with popular and cool guy, cool people, uh, do like crazy activities. I I don't like to be super nerdy guy. It's something actually that I I try to avoid to look like a nerdy guy, and and also when I'm giving lectures at my university. Then I try. I I want to make sure that everyone value what I'm just talking. I I don't want to be boring. Uh, I don't want to spend my energy on something that no one cares. So I try to establish this common common uh, value among all the students. So I I ask them or I try to show them why it is valuable 
like for example when i'm teaching about cryptocurrency then some people are here for the technology right some people are here for the money they just want to invest i know that so i i try to show them as as many possibilities or, or as many values that they can care about uh, as possible so that i make sure that everyone is paying attention to what i am what i'm blasting right at, at the moment uh, yeah so that's the two 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 two, two ways how i see as a blast I guess you're not doing the traditional SF blast that like ISFJs would be doing or ESFJs where like they kind of, it's yours is double feminine. So you're going to be more gentle when you're using it uh, as opposed to someone that has it double masculine, where if someone is behaving inappropriately, then you would correct their behavior with that SF blast. Uh, do you see, do you, have you ever done that where you're like correcting someone's behavior in, in a more double feminine way? Of course you don't do that. I'm not correcting anyone. No, I, I'm the type of person who is rather avoiding those people or just or just trying to align with them so that, uh, I mean, if someone is, what do you mean about by correcting someone? If, if, if he's illogical or if he's just... It, it has nothing yeah, to do with it, logic. It has nothing to do with logic. Um, the best example is Tom Cruise. So they had a video in the class of Tom Cruise doing SF blast on the rude reporter. So the reporter's being rude, okay. asking him rude questions. So he he corrected his behavior, told asked, told him, "Hey, your behavior is inappropriate. Uh, you know, cut it out, right?" And then uh, and then the reporter freaked out, right? But then later on, they were they were because he's because he's a double decider. They're cool, and then uh, the reporter was like shocked that they were still cool because he 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 thought because Tom Cruise just told him his behavior is inappropriate. But that's just SF blast in action, right? So, but then I guess because you're a decider, it's a little bit different. You know, uh, I think a uh, more double decider would be using it in a different method than uh, than an IP would. So, um, so yours yours seems to be different. Maybe when you have kids one day, uh, the way you were yeah. using your SF, maybe that's when you'll use it. But then I don't see you using it unless you have kids. Yeah, that's true. I'm not correcting anyone uh, because he's rude. No, I'm not this this kind of person. Right. Um, yeah. uh, let's cover your next animal, NF play. Uh, you have a third. Um, it's meaning and purpose. It's like the woo woo stuff. Um, and it's with a tribe because it's it's play, right? So, um, you were talking about some stuff earlier, like NLP, lucid dreaming, dreaming, all this NF uh concepts. Um, do you do you do you share with that with your with your tribe usually, like your your girlfriend or someone else? Like, do you you do you do you like to discuss that like that kind of stuff with other people? Yes, yes, I like. Um, but but as I am mature, as as I am older, it's something that I consider to be uh, bullshit a bit. Uh, yeah. I used to believe in that stuff, and I consider it being very helpful. And I believe that this is really helpful. Like like your beliefs, your like all this affirmation stuff. And I believe in that. I feel like it works. and But it's not working the way people try to sell it to you or people think it works. It's not that some magical energy is, is approaching you and helping you. It's, it's just because we are so belief biased. We, we see what we believe in. If we see our, ourselves as, as a cool guy, then we, we become a cool guy. And if we see ourselves as, I mean, we have to permit ourselves to become someone before we uh, be be become that person. So uh, it is something I respect, this NF bull. I, I really like it. I I experienced it a lot. And and that's why um, it's, it's, it's really, that's why also those people who are super NT and they are just laughing at people who are more NF, they annoy me because I, I feel like they, they just have to discover this part of, of their life. Um, yeah, so so basically, I like NF, I respect NF, I like talking with people on, about NF, right? These spiritual things, religion. Um, if I, 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 even though I, I'm a scientist, uh, is I, I don't reject uh, religion or any spirituality. I feel I feel like this is just a different different way of looking at nature and and people in general. Well, it makes sense you respect NF because um, you have ST and NF 
activated in your first three animals. So that's not going to be your uh, area of imbalance at all. Like, you, you, yes, it's like what you said, some part is bullshit, but some part is correct. So that sounds just, just like your SD and NF, you know, interacting with each other. And it's it's in a fine balance because uh, I'm like you have SD and NF also in the first three animals. So I, I do respect those two and it's balanced. It's, I think it's the one with NF savior, but S, ST last that has trouble with um, reality or people with NF last and SD savior that has trouble accepting what NF is. So for us, I think it, it's, it's, it's in a more balanced state. With that being said though, your last animal is consume. It's double masculine NT. So it, it kind of makes you more balanced because, um, because it's double masculine. Like when you have a double masculine last animal, that's like the best place it could be. Like I have a double masculine last animal and I, I can use it. And I, I feel like you could probably, you probably have access to it too. Um, in, in the classes they use, um, Mark Rober. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's like the ENTP sleep class, uh, YouTuber. He has like over 30 million subscribers. He's like one of the most popular ENTPs, uh, out there. And I haven't consumed him. No. Yeah. Oh, well, anyways, ch check it out. He's what I, I love his videos. It's so good. Um, okay. Anyway, so he can use the ST to to engineer things because it's double masculine. Because it, it's even though it's his last animal, it's double masculine. So he, he has access and to and it. He's in a ENFP? ENTP. ENTP, okay. Yeah, actually, it's, it's he's good to follow for you because you guys are in the same quadra. And mm -hmm. David Chan said, this guy is the only guy doing it right. Like those TI people, they're not doing it right. Because he said, like he uses okay. F, 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 E first. And he asks the tribe, what do you guys want to see? And after the tribe tells them what, the, what, what they value, what they want to see, then he constructs it. He doesn't construct it first and show it to the tribe, which is stupid. Because then everyone, mm, yeah. then after, you, after you show it to the tribe, they're like, no one cares. You know, they wasted, they wasted your time, right? So um, so they said, yeah, if you're like a lead TI, follow him because he, he'll show you like what's the right way to do it. Uh, anyways, with that being said, uh, you have double masculine anti-consume. Um, can you talk about how you're, how it's hard for you to still consume, but also how you are still consuming regardless because of that double masculine flavor for that last animal? Okay, so um, I thought that I am play that play last, so I thought that like I am consuming. Uh, I mean, it's not my uh, last function. Um, only now I realize how little I consume. <laughs> it's like when the war uh, at Ukraine began, it took me two weeks to realize what happened. Like I, I didn't put any, I, I don't put any, any um, time, energy into tracking news. Um, but I don't know if that's anti-consume actually. I just know that this is probably consume. I am not paying any attention. I'm super ignorant person when it comes to stuff that I am not interested in. And so I admit that I'm super ignorant. Um, and, but it, when there is something that really interests me, uh, then I can read a lot of like, every book. And I'm also, uh, I'm tracking the area when, uh, when I am working on. So the newest technologies, this is something, uh, this is something I, I, I care about. But uh, yeah, I am considered the most ignorant person. Like my, my my friends, they always said that I'm ignorant, and I am mono 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 thematic mono. Like I'm focusing only on one one subject, and then I try to extrapolate this one subject to every other area of my life. Um, I'm reading books, which is something probably not uh, that common in consume last, but I try to read every day. Uh, but only I also I try to consume in a way which is more uh, general or abstract so I don't focus on I, I, I read books which are more philosophical because I consider like the philosophy covers much much more than it um, than, than concrete books uh, if I understand the, the pattern of, of the whole history or the humankind then probably I can save some time on consuming other, other me medium um uh what else why am i consuming uh being a double masculine actually i don't know you have to help me with that like what is what does it mean to be double masculine consume last 
Uh, double masculine, I think the best way to describe it is it's like a gravitational pull. You cannot avoid it no matter what. It's there and it's pulling you towards it. So even if it's your last animal, um, there's that gravitational pull that you have to take a look at the very least. Um, because your consumers is NT, it's for the purpose of problem solving. So when you are doing work or even if you're dealing with a tribe and you have some problems, then you're going to look for the solution through consume. So it's, it's, and it's abstract. So as you mentioned already earlier, you're absorbing patterns, not the sensory per se, which it makes a lot of sense based on your consume style, which is NT. So you're consuming solutions for your problems. And because it's double masculine, even if it's last, you're going to be using it uh, because it's double masculine. You cannot, you cannot not see it. It's, it's there. It's obvious. Like you have to do it, you know? Mm. I think that um, is consume using a fee or is consume using any, is any a plus TI, right? Yeah. So right. It's a a plus plus TI. that's right. Yeah. I see that when, when I'm doing, for example, I'm writing paper uh, or I just have an idea because I realize or someone convinced me that there is uh, a problem somewhere and, and I find out how to solve it then I'm super triggered. Like I just want to get started. I don't want to spend any time researching if someone else did it. So this is probably my biggest blind spot when doing in my work and when doing science is that I can work on some idea for two months just to realize that after two months, someone else did it and did it better. So it's like, but, but, but I don't want to see that someone else did it. I feel like I'm wasting my time. Uh, I won't probably understand everything. So it's much, much better to just start producing and over time you realize uh, that someone else did it. And, and at that point, I can always pivot to, to, to some different solution or do something differently. Um, but yeah, I won't start with researching. I will start from, from solving problem. Uh, which is which is not uh, which is not the best way to approach science because science should start from hey understand what is going on and then try to put a little bit more of of what we understand and I am trying to start with I have a great solution listen listen I have a great solution I will I will just do it and show you show you how how it's done and and, and then uh, I just realized that someone else did it so. Yeah, that's that's my my biggest struggle when it comes to my my work. Also, I don't I'm not sure if that's consuming, but I don't track any news when it comes to my to my friends. Like um, someone has to to tell me what is happening in their life. Uh, I'm not using social media, social media, or asking people, "Hey, how are you." No, I usually I'm not. So I'm outdated when it comes to people, people stuff, and just social life in general. <laughs> I mean that makes sense based on what you said about, um, you know, consuming and you know seeing someone that has a better stuff and whatnot. Um, you have blast about consume, so you have to produce first before you consume, which makes a lot of sense. And you can't learn unless you produce first. Uh, which yeah. makes I I have blast about consume as well like you so. Um, you know, I, I, I did notice that it, like, if I try to consume first and nothing comes in, so I do have to produce also first. So I totally get what you, what you said about that explanation earlier. Um, with that being said though, um, you said just now that, um, you're outdated when it comes to other people's lives and they have to tell you, otherwise you won't know if they tell you what's going on with their life. Are you interested or are you not interested if they're your friend? I am interested. I'm, I'm, I'm super interested and I, I take care and that's also consume me a lot of energy that's why maybe sometimes i just don't want to see that as i i want to postpone it to the like tell me that in the in the weekend so that i have time to, to spend on that i don't want i i have silenced all my notifications from social media so i i'm not receiving any messages i i i i, I don't see any messages from messenger or whatsapp or whatever whatever um which is probably a bit rude and, but I, I do it because 
I just want to, you know, um, I know that the cost of being disrupted, it, it, it costs me so much time when I, when someone tells me something emotional, for example, then I'm, I'm processing it and it, it can, can, it can take me two hours. Uh, this is two hours spent on something that uh, I could, I could spend, uh, for example, hanging out with other people is the time I, I prefer to being updated with what is going on. I don't like to be um, messages. Uh, I don't want to re receive messages about uh, w what happened to, to someone else's life. I prefer to just let, let's meet at the time uh, I'm free and then you can tell me whatever you want. And I'm, I am my time is dedicated just for you. Uh, I can consume all your life or your problems and help you advise and we can share our problems. Um, I'm like, I, I'm either the best friend or the worst, worst friend. I'm here or I'm just hiding somewhere else in the basement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not, it's part of my life, which is probably not that well balanced. Um, but I, I accept this, um, I, sac I sacrifice it intentionally. Um, but as I said, I just put attention to do it periodically uh, so that I'm not uh, hated by, by the tribe. Right, that makes sense. Um, this is the perfect segue then to your the last topic I want to talk about, which is your social type. So you're a one and a two, right? So your flex slash responsibility, friends last, um, and specialization is kind of like it's like a demon, but also a hobby, a hobby, hobby, social type, you could say. Um, <clears throat> can you talk about being a number one and the ego part of it and you know, being competitive, being the best? Can you talk about like the drive behind that? And you know, like, how does that? How, what's that like? What does that feel to to have the drive to be the best? <laughs> Actually, I don't know how it's like to to not have this, this drive. It's I something think. that I, I'm I'm asking people, I how can you not know how can you not like your your work? When I have free time, then I'm working because it's my favorite activity in my life. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm yeah I'm driven for like most of my life, and when I wake up, I just want to start working. Um, I learned over time how to like dedicate the the the, the part of the of the week uh, to some other activities like working out or hanging out with, with people, but working is actually that something that I really like. And when it comes to flexing, actually uh, I don't see that my that that much flex in, in what what I'm doing. Probably it's my blind spot. It's something that everyone sees, but I'm not. Um, Maybe my, 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 my flexing is just indirect. It's not something I'm doing directly, like telling you, hey, look, I'm the best, or hey, look, what, I, what, what I've achieved. No, it's, it's, it's more like I'm this quiet guy who just figured out stuff, or found a way to be successful. And if you want to um, prove me wrong, then I'm just like, hey, look, I achieved all, all everything I wanted to achieve. So. Um, I'm flexing just to proving that I'm right. Uh, also, when I'm flexing, is probably I try to make a, a joke out of it. Out of it, it's like, hey, look, I'm the best, or I'm the smartest one. But I'm, I will also laugh at myself, like, what the fuck is, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, no one cares. Uh, no one likes when you are showing off. Uh, so it's something that I want to hide. Um, Maybe it's also something that is very Polish, that we are punished for being selfish and showing off and you cannot be above anyone else. You have to be like everyone else. Probably uh, is something that influenced me also. Um, yeah, but, but for sure the drive is, is really strong. So if I would define flex for me, it's just a drive. It's not, a, it's not a ego, it's mostly, mostly drive. I guess the the energy dominant side diffuses the, the 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 bragging showing off part because it's it's it you want to make it fun right that's why there's the energy dominant yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah but the drive is there um it's interesting because I'm a number two and I do work a lot but the goal is not to be the best the goal is independence like I work hard so that I don't have to rely on anybody 
but I don't care about like the 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 flex part itself, you know. So 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 that's kind of interesting. Uh, but you're you're yeah. a woman too, so you have both those both those factors uh, in you, you know, independence and achievement and and drive. You have it all together, right? Yes, I would describe it is as uh, if I will be the if when I'm the best, then I know that this is true. If if like you are looking for a meta of life, how to achieve success in your life, then the only way to find like the ultimate solution, the ultimate truth, is by achieving is by dominating this area. Then you know for sure that you are you are the closest to truth. Because I, I define uh, truth to just be the most aligned with 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 real. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> I I uh, define success to be uh, aligned with the with the truth. So when you are the most successful, then that also means that you are you are the closest to the truth in this narrow area of life, right? So if you are bodybuilder, like you are Arnold Schwarzenegger, then I trust him in his knowledge. He has my fullest authority. Um, I know that he found a way to just dominate in this area. If we have technology, then I don't know, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs. I trust those people because I know that they, you, you can't be, uh, you can't be, I don't know, you know, you, you, you have to understand how things work uh, if you want to be successful. Uh, so when I'm successful, then I know that I, I know how things works, how things work, and also um, that I'm doing it right. And no one can prove me that I'm doing something wrong because I have results and the results are the ultimate proof for uh, doing something right or figuring out how things work. <laughs> I don't know. It's like if, if you are um, in science, we have like this citation. The citations is like the score of how well you are doing in science. I want to have I, I want to have the most citations as possible because it will prove me that I am on the right track. I'm doing something right. Uh, when you are in business, you just want to make as much money as possible because it's a proof that you are doing something objectively useful, right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, how well, I see. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, because because in business, like the more profit you make, that means the more people value your yeah exactly. Product, yeah exactly it's not about ego it's about being useful i guess right uh cool man all right um so we'll wrap up the interview here um do you have any last final comments before we wrap it up um actually i i saw that you are traveling a lot uh, i would like you to ask to, to tell me why i mean what's the purpose of traveling for you it's it's my so I have NF consumed so um, NF is correlated with um, purpose mission um, meaning so the way I derive meaning and purpose is through new life experiences through NF consumed so every time I travel and I go to a new place I get a sense of energy that I would not get if I just stayed in the same place so the new experience fuels my my purpose and my meaning. Um, so that when I'm older, I can work on that area that I, that I really want to work on that I feel like will give me meaning and purpose. Um, so for me, the, the only word that has popped up since I've been traveling around the world is the word opportunity. And, um, I, I remember I went to three different countries specifically that made this pop up. Um, the three countries was Belarus and I went to Venezuela and the other one was Vietnam and all three times I met three people with the same circumstance where they have a dream in life, they want to pursue something, but because they live in a dictatorship kind of a, a country, they don't have the opportunity. So that that's, and then so I, I remember one of them, the one from Vietnam said, um, I hope that one day when I have children, that my children will have the opportunity to live the, the life that they want because they they don't have that constraint. Uh, that that holds them down. Um, when I was in Venezuela, the guy that I met, he he's a porter. He carries bags for trekkers up the mountain, but he he said he was an Olympic level gymnast, but he can't pursue his dream because uh, Venezuela was poor, and so as a result, he can't compete at that high level. So 
for me, he was squand. For me, I felt like he was squandering his his natural inborn talent. And to me, that's like the worst thing possible. Is you have all this talent, you have all this skill, but you can't do anything with it because uh, you the the system that you're in uh, doesn't foster that. So uh, the more I travel, the more I realize that one day, once I am much older, I'm secure financially, that I would like to start some kind of nonprofit organization that uh, provides opportunity to people who lives in those kind of places and the, the the idea is not it's not um charity it's opportunity so it could be from a form of a loan or just a temporary visa out of their country so they can live somewhere else but as long as they have that window of opportunity to do that i think that's all that that's all that matters what what, what you do with that window is up to you so um so that that's what the purpose of my travel is because i'm trying to understand um, what I'm, what I would like to pursue when I'm older, um, and also for myself. So a little, a part of it's also my ego, um, my flex. So from a flex perspective, it's like I want to visit every single country in the world. So for me, it's like, yeah, w- w- like you know, when I get when I go to job interviews now, for example, they ask me, oh, can you tell me about yourself? And I tell them, oh, I love traveling. I've been to 97 countries. They were like, holy shit, you've been to 97 countries. So when they're looking at resumes. I already stand out, right? They're like, oh my God, this one guy here, he's been to so many places. I don't even remember these other people. So I have something that stands out, like something cool that like, or something like amazing. Because how many people have been to like, like 97 countries? Like I have three more to reach 100, right? So, um, so that's, that's why I travel a lot. Um, I don't travel. I mean, I like, you know, trying different food too, meeting people for sure. I, I definitely enjoy that too, but that's more like the SF side, but my, my purpose of travel is NF and NF is meaning and purpose. So it's, it's different from like how an ESFP would travel, for example, you know, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that make, makes sense. Also, this is, so you just, you do it for, for finding a purpose or just fulfilling your, 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 your purpose. Yeah. You are, yeah, you are fulfilling your, your purpose to just um, make some significance on the world, like discover other culture or just stand above the, your, your culture. And you want to help other people uh, by knowing their perspective, right? Uh, Empathy. Yeah, because yeah, because when I am talking with people who are traveling a lot, I feel like most of them are just traveling for the second part that you mentioned is your ego. is is just to to be able to flex about how much uh, countries uh, have you have you visited, right? And, and I was wondering, I I, mean, I wanted you you to convince me that I'm wrong, like that there is some deeper, d- deeper meaning behind that. And you did it well, like you, you can, you can just um, consume or just um, learn by, by traveling and seeing uh, other people's perspective. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, one thing, for example, is like I, wherever I go, I've probably been to your country before. And, and I, I, we have that instant connection as a result because yeah. I'm, like, I, like, for example, when I talk to you, I'm like, oh yeah, you're like, oh, I live in, I, I, I live in Gdansk. I'm like, yeah, I've been there. So you're like, what the hell? Yeah. Who's been to Gdansk? Cause people, people, you know, people don't go to Poland to go to Gdansk. They go probably go to uh, uh, Krakow, right? Um, you know, for yeah, like, because, of Sh- because of Schindler's, Schindler's List, right? The movie, right? So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's true. But I went there to that's- like, like I went, I went to teach Eng- like to 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 help with the English camp, right? To like teach English and stuff. So, um, so it's I have like a opportunity to meet the locals and stuff and understand like what Polish life is like. And, like, like I think one of the funniest thing I learned about Polish people is you guys are grumpy the first five minutes, and then, <laughs> because like I, I was talking to a Polish person about this. They're like, I'm like, so why are you guys grumpy the first five minutes? And then you're chill after. They're like, oh, we're just re- really um insecure about our English. And then also they said that other Polish people are judgmental. And when they see a Polish person talking to an, a foreigner in English, the, the Polish person that's watching is already thinking, what the fuck are you doing? You're wasting your time. You're embarrassing yourself trying to speak English to this foreigner. And then, and then, yeah. so, so that's why the Polish person gets insecure talking to a foreigner, but they're actually not grumpy. They actually want to talk to the foreigner, be nice and stuff. But they're, they know those other Polish people, assholes are like watching them and judging them. And, and like, you know, um, so, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so I thought it was funny, and I, because I know this, like when I talk to Polish people, they're like, "Oh shit, yeah, you know what's going on, dude," you know. So it's it's like it's cool. Like I like that. 
I like that. Uh, like I I I I have I have that instant connection. Like I think I interviewed someone before from the Congo, and I was like, yeah, I've been to Congo. They're like, what? No one goes to my country. It's not a tourist place. I'm like, but I've been there. <laughs> so, you know what I mean. So, yeah. So I think from building from like a if if you're looking for it from an FE standpoint, it's the ultimate way to build connections with people is 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 travel. Like yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's also something I, I'm I'm convincing myself that actually. Having something in common with with other people is the easiest way because you you can instantly start the conversation, right? You go, oh, I was there. I know, I know about, I I I know something. Even if you were, was there for like one day, it's something you can start the, the the connection. Yeah, but this is something I had to discover in my life. Actually, and you are yeah. probably just also you are fulfilling also your play, uh, play savior, right? Because you are doing this for for play with other people. Um, for me, it's something that really is not that important. I mean, I, I now I see the value of that, but this is something I had to um, discover in my life. Yeah, I mean, definitely the play gets involved, but it's not like I mean, I'm doing it for me because it's NF. It's 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 for my FI. Why do it? The other stuff is just a bonus, you know. And because I'm a double decider, I don't see things as like just one one direction, where. Um, I'm just benefiting from it. It's it's like I'm benefiting from it, but it also benefits the person I interact with. Um, because yeah, there's no you know when you talk to people for the first time, there's like a little bit of a dance that you have to do, um, before you can start talking about the real stuff, right? Um, and yeah. usually it's breaking the walls. The wall is like to protect yourself, either from he- being hurt by the other person emotionally. Um, so yet or so the so the fastest way to bring the walls down is, um having experience in that person's culture and and then then they feel understood by you and they don't have to keep the walls up and so that's the benefit from from that but then even that that also benefits you from a selfish uh purpose because um if there's something that you're trying to achieve and you need the tribe's help for it then you don't need to do that stupid dance you just go straight to the point because they you have that inside connection so you save time actually um so i think travel is like a is the, one of the best investment you could ever ever do uh, just for that purpose. And also don't forget when you travel, uh, you build connections in every country. So you have hookup, you have a uh, networks now, right? If I go to Poland, I have friends in Poland. So I have connections. Plus I interview you and like other Polish people. So it's like, mm. I have double the the network, right? Uh, so like, I, I don't know any place I, I can go. I don't know anybody. Like I, I, I know someone in most places I go to, even in like the deepest part of Africa, like I know someone, you know, so, um, and you know what they say? You know, there's a saying, right? Your net worth is your network. So, you know, um, so something, yeah. something to keep in mind, also, right? Uh, from like uh, from a, a career standpoint. Anyways, dude, um, it's been nice talking to you. I uh, gotta wrap this interview. Gotta take my girlfriend to watch uh, Barbie in you know, the movie. Um, yeah, I, I was uh, I watched Barbie yesterday. Yeah, did you like? Totally it? Totally recommend. Yeah, it was really good. But, yeah. It's really good yeah. from this like cultural perspective of. Uh, yeah. I won't spoil you uh, anything, but it's pretty really good. All right. Awesome, man. All right. Take care. And I'll see you around the, the group, the Facebook groups and with that. All right. Take care. Yeah, thank you.